Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today I'm talking once again about Autism Speaks. If you haven't seen my other videos on the topic, I highly recommend you check those out first because I don't want anyone thinking I'm hating on them without good reason here. Now, today we're not going over a long list of horrible things they've done, that was the first video I've done on them, but we're mentioning one specific issue that I think proves to be a pretty good example of how Autism Speaks moves the autism movement backwards and does more damage than good. Although honestly, it's kind of like, did we need any more examples? But okay, I keep finding more. So let's just get right into it. The Asan, Autism Speaks, and Sesame Street controversy. Sesame Street, as I'm sure most of you know, is an educational children's show. It's been around since 1969 and has over 4,500 episodes and is an institution in its own right. Mentioning Sesame Street is like mentioning The Simpsons. Whether or not you've seen the show, chances are you are aware of it. So when Julia was introduced to the show in 2017 as an autistic character, the response was incredibly positive. The woman playing the puppet has a son with autism as well, and this would be the first new character Sesame Street introduced in a decade. An expert on child development, Segan Hartley, said on News 3 that she was incredibly happy that they were thoughtful and took time to present Julia in a thoughtful way. Reportedly, Sesame Street took three years to develop this character. She wasn't simply thrown on screen to satisfy viewers or for clickbait. Sigan says the long-term goal doesn't appear to be Sesame Street presenting her as the character with autism, but simply as Julia. As for why it's important to have Julia on the show, Sigan explains that it's important to debunk myths that autism is scary or that these are broken families, so it's so important to have these images out there. And I couldn't agree with her more. Understanding and embracing differences means the world when kids are at a young age because they're learning and growing. Seeing that autism isn't scary or having someone to relate to on the show could make an incredible impact on a child's life. Even if everyone is different and not all autistic people act the same, this is a huge step in the right direction. So I watched the episode when Julia was introduced and I have to say, I think they did a really good job here. Big Bird acts confused why Julia didn't answer him while she was painting and the man hosting the finger painting session, Alan, says that sometimes Julia takes a while to answer, it helps to ask again. No one shouted at Julia to hurry up or say that, oh, Julia has autism and left it at that. It was explained simply and gently in a way that a child could understand. When the question was asked, what's autism? It was made clear that for Julia, it means she might not answer you right away, speak a lot or do what you expect. She does things in a Julia sort of way, but she's a lot of fun. And rather than make definitive statements that would imply all autistic children act this way, Alan said, sometimes people with autism may do things that seem confusing to you. They even showed Julia doing some deep breathing exercises to calm down when she was bothered by sirens. This episode was absolutely something I needed to make me smile at the dark stuff I typically research. It was sweet, thoughtful, and even illustrated how confused people may be like Big Bird when they are initially making friends with someone who is autistic. So 10 out of 10 there. Many parents, as expected, love the idea. Sherry Weston, an executive vice president at Sesame Workshop who oversaw the initiative, said the campaign quickly struck a chord. One of my favorite stories is a mother who said that she used the book to explain to her child that she had autism like Julia, Weston said, shaking her head as she teared up. This became the tool for her to have a conversation with her five-year-old daughter. And you'll love this. At the end, her daughter said, so I'm amazing too, right? An article from The Guardian said Julia could erode ignorance and the writer, a woman whose brother had autism, said she often witnessed people bullying her brother because he was different and misunderstood. Although some people asked why Julia couldn't be a boy because autism is five times more prevalent in males than females, Sesame Street reported that it was for the exact same reason they made Julia a girl. They wanted to make it clear girls can be on the spectrum too because there's misconceptions that only boys can have autism in the first place. When the show first aired, an autistic writer from Vox, Dylan Matthews, even brought Autism Speaks into question. He said the following, that's a message that fits in well with Sesame Street, but is miles ahead of autism representation elsewhere in TV and movies. For years, the autism group with the most purchase in Hollywood and the entertainment industry has been Autism Speaks. It's lighted up blue concerts in LA, are star-studded affairs with guests like Jack Black, Christina Applegate, and Brad Pitt, and co-hosted by FX Network COO and Autism Speaks board member, Chuck Saftler. 
that group has analogized having autism to being kidnapped or having a fatal disease. One of its fundraising videos features an Autism Speaks executive recalling a time she thought driving off a bridge to kill her autistic child. It should be no surprise given the prominence of a group like that in Hollywood that movie studios have put out some harmful and at times actively anti-autistic film projects over the years. 2009's Adam, starring Hugh Dancy as a man on the autistic spectrum and Rose Brine as his love interest, seemed designed to show that neurotypical people would have to be nuts to even consider dating someone with autism. I saw that movie when I was 19, having never seen a serious relationship before, and it was both offensive and deeply terrifying. What if the movie was right? What if people like me didn't deserve to have romantic relationships like everybody else? And as for Sesame Street, Matthews explained, the show doesn't give Julia a utopia to live in. It gives her a community where neurotypical people like Big Bird are genuinely trying their best and respecting her as a human being. It's a beautiful model for neurotypical kids and one I hope the show continues to explore. As for the reason why Julia did so well, I credit that in part to Asan, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. They consulted with Sesame Street for years when developing Julia, and until summer 2019, they said, the content Sesame Street produced showed parents that their autistic children could live great lives and taught autistic and neurotypical children ways to become friends. Through this approach, See Amazing successfully encouraged the inclusion of autistic children in their communities and had a widespread positive impact. So what happened? Well, Autism Speaks happened. The Sesame Street PSAs that came out in mid-2019 said to go to screen for autism.org, a screening process developed by Autism Speaks. The link goes directly to the Autism Speaks website and there Julia is, right on the front of the page. To this day, Sesame Street's been partnered with them and I have to say, it was really disappointing to hear. Sesame Street did a world of good, taking leaps and bounds forward, but partnering with Autism Speaks was like jumping right back to the beginning and reaffirming all the stigmas they were trying to erase in the first place. For the children, I'm sure it's still fantastic and important to see Julia on the screen, but now parents of those same children are being directed to use Autism Speaks to help them, and those resources they're being given are, well, less than progressive. If we go to the same link parents are directed to, there's a 100 day kit that Asan condemns. I downloaded the kit for free and gave them a fake email. I don't really want Autism Speaks in my inbox. Thanks, Sweaty. And I gave it a look through. The first 10 pages were pretty much statistics, things that would be hard to get wrong. Though on page five, they start off a paragraph with the words, while autism is usually a lifelong condition, speaking as if there's a cure. And let's be clear, there is no cure. It is a lifelong condition. Some autistic people may have a bit more control than others and many don't want a cure. But saying there isn't usually a cure is pretty misleading of a statement. It's not the information they should be presenting to parents. It gives them false hope and creates a serious misunderstanding. But on page 14 was where I started noticing the most problems. They go through stages associated with grieving, explaining that a parent may go through denial, anger, bargaining, grief, and acceptance. These are the stages people go through when someone dies. There is a huge difference between saying this will be difficult and equating it to death. On page 15, there's a quote from a parent that says this, I felt angry when a child at my son's school was diagnosed with leukemia around the same time our son was diagnosed with autism. Everyone sent cards and cooked dinner for them. They didn't know I needed that kind of help too. Uh, what? I don't cover entitled parent stories anymore, so this? Oof, that's a flashback I didn't need. But this is actually in that little booklet, just so you know. But I just, okay, <laughs> I need to wrap my head around this for a minute. What I'm reading here is that this entitled parent is seriously suggesting that her son's diagnosis of autism is just as scary as leukemia. I don't think so. And this is on page 15 in a kit that Sesame Street is now promoting. That's just great. Can you imagine being so ignorant that you're mad at people for helping a family with a child diagnosed with leukemia? Like what the fuck? There's only more language like this, unfortunately. They talk about coping and how it will change the way you look at your child and you may want to join a support group. I can't quote the entire thing at you guys, but just let me be clear that at times it wasn't just what was said that bothered me. It's how it was phrased. It's the depressing tone that we've discussed before, that hopelessness, that this is an incurable illness and you're going to be sad for the rest of your life type of tone. They also say, we're all so busy sometimes we forget to stay in touch with friends when everything 
everything's fine for them, but we rush forward when they need us. Now is the time to take advantage of that. Talk your friend's ears off, complain, bitch, and moan to them. You're dealing with a huge challenge. Take advantage of every minor plus it has to offer. And yes, that's the language too. They aren't saying it's okay to vent to friends and family because you face a challenge. They specifically advise talking their ear off and bitching because that's a great way to treat people that are trying to be there for you. I don't know about you, but if I were a friend to one of these parents, I wouldn't exactly want to learn more about autism and try to understand my friend's child if this is how I was being spoken to. On page 17, Autism Speaks says, anecdotal evidence suggests that certain diets may help with autism. Yeah, anecdotal evidence, which just means evidence based on personal stories, not any real research. And again, that's misleading parents. They may as well have said, if you feed your child a healthy diet, there's a chance they won't have autism because if I was a parent searching for something to help my child, I might be tempted to read between these lines too. Then on page 47, they say that 10% of children lose their diagnosis. Is that possible? Yes, but this is by no means saying that they've completely lost their symptoms. Having symptoms managed or high functioning autism doesn't mean cured, but Autism Speaks literally starts the section of, is there a cure, which again, is super deceptive, but you're supposed to answer that question with a big obvious no and to not cause confusion. Anything else is misleading and quite frankly, pisses me off. I don't want to pretend that this entire thing is bad advice. There are a few good things like carving out time for your child and education services. When it comes to straightforward information, education, signs of autism, etc., Autism Speaks has that information sourced. But the more opinionated pages are dark and dreary, just as we've witnessed multiple times in the past. And the fallout from this has been incredibly noteworthy. Sesame Street said they created the See Amazing in All Children initiative to express that all children have something to contribute. Unique perspectives and talents that help make the world a richer and more interesting place. But that message is in direct conflict with Autism Speaks' history. In case you didn't see the second video I made on Autism Speaks, they recommended a center that tortured autistic children with hundreds of electric shocks a day, often given for no reason and called this literal torture therapy. You can't praise autistic children for their differences in one breath and then treat them like they're diseased. Especially not when Autism Speaks is yet to truly apologize for what they've done or include autistic people on its board of directors. Asan said this on August 5th of 2009, we discussed with Sesame Street repeatedly and in great detail what this decision would mean for the autistic community. We explained to them how these ideas harm autistic children and our families and reinforce societal prejudice against autistic people. Our contacts acknowledged that the Autism Speaks resources were harmful and portrayed autistic children in a negative light, yet they were unwilling to reverse course in their plans to promote them. As a result, we have formally ended our partnership with Sesame Street. Too often, parents of autistic children are bombarded with terrifying messages. They are told that their autistic children will destroy their marriage and their non-disabled children's lives. They are told that their child's happiness and their own depends on the child getting better by hiding their autistic traits and to work towards this goal above all else. They are told to grieve for the hypothetical non-disabled child they had imagined rather than to love and connect to the autistic child in front of them. These messages hurt autistic people, scare our families and encourage our communities to fear and exclude us. Autism Speaks has played a central role in developing them. The See Amazing initiative was groundbreaking because it offered an alternative to these stories. It let families know that their autistic children are amazing, can live happy lives and are deserving of love. Now, Sesame Street has decided to let See Amazing become just another vehicle for Autism Speaks to spread the same old toxic ideas. Decision makers at Sesame Street understand the position they are in. For 50 years, Sesame Street has created content with the explicit goal of impacting the real lives of children and families. It is too late to pretend that Sesame Street can amplify harmful messages without causing harm. We call on Sesame Street to recognize the damage they are doing and their partnership with Autism Speaks and commit to producing and promoting only content which increases the inclusion, acceptance, and well being of autistic children. Sesame Street's actions here really, really rubbed me the wrong way. It was a song that helped develop Julia in the first place. Sesame Street trusted them enough to work on this inspiring character, only to ignore their advice later. It's not as if Asan just said goodbye and left the second Autism Speaks became involved. They talked to them multiple times, but Sesame Street didn't back down. I don't know if it's just because of Autism Speaks' name, their sway, their money, or whatever reason it is that Sesame Street had to continue promoting with them. 
If I had to guess, I'd say it's a combination of all of those. Sometimes pairing with gigantic companies can mean you have the opportunity to do the most good. Sometimes it means compromising ethics to get the word out. In this case, I believe it's the latter. And when we're talking about such a serious topic that already has so much information about it, the autism movement deserves to have the backing of a legitimate moral charity behind it. It's not as if there are not plenty to choose from, but Sesame Street went with one of the absolute worst autism organizations they could have, at least in my opinion. Public reaction to this is actually somewhat minimal. I'm not saying there weren't people voicing their disappointments, especially those in the autistic community, but overall, there wasn't nearly as much of an outcry as I feel this deserved. A report from Current.org said that Autism Speaks has a rocky relationship with Asan, which is putting it mildly. Zoe Gross, director of operations for Asan, told Current that her organization's decision stems from resources previously developed by Autism Speaks and promoted as part of the campaign. Some of the resource materials designed for parents promote fear of autism rather than acceptance, Gross said, including advice that parents may experience stages of grief upon learning that their child is autistic. When someone finds out their child is autistic, it's a very scary landscape, Gross said. We want to teach them it's okay, your kid loves you, they can live a normal life. Sesame Workshop notified Asan of the campaign prior to its launch, according to Gross. Asan immediately conveyed concerns with the Autism Speaks resources in private discussions with Sesame Workshop, Gross said. Gross points to a section in the kit that advises parents on dealing with a diagnosis. You want your child to get better so badly that you may feel some of the stages commonly associated with grieving, the kit says. It's like you've experienced a loss by having a disabled child, Gross said. It's a bunch of stuff that isn't good for anyone to hear. The kit also tells parents that arguments between parents may arise, not because they're mad at each other, but because the autism has you so upset and angry, which Asan says encourages parents to blame their autistic children. Additionally, the kit says following its advice will help both children and parents get better, which Asan says depicts autism as a terrible disease. And just about every other company said the same thing. They gave Asan's perspective and statement, but not much else. Fast Company did a bit more information and wrote this. Asan is run entirely by people who are autistic. One of the criticisms is that Autism Speaks can't possibly understand the community it serves because it doesn't include enough people who are autistic in its daily operations. Lisa Goring, Autism Speaks Strategic Initiatives and Innovation Officer says there are several autistic team members on the spectrum. The group is also concerned that Autism Speaks co-founder Bob Wright is on Ad Council's honorary board of members, which might've led to the shrugging off of their criticism. The Ad Council declined to comment on this story while Goring emphasizes that Wright had nothing to do with the campaign. I'm a bit disappointed that there weren't more people speaking out about this. It's been a year and this information clearly wasn't as important to news outlets as Julia herself. The public can make a difference if they speak up. If enough people cared and spoke up on this, calling Sesame Street out on letting Julia be backed by Autism Speaks, maybe then they'd finally do something about it. The facts were reported, people know what Autism Speaks really stands for, clearly, but it feels like they were barely any opinions on Julia, whereas in 2017, people couldn't stop talking about how excited they were for this character. One of the only opinions I found was an autistic writer from Slate. Laura Luterman wrote the following. I am autistic like Julia. Instead of a childhood full of social rejection and isolation like mine, Julia's life modeled a better world until very recently. Julia's difference is embraced by her friends. People go out of their way to understand and include her. I'm a little embarrassed to admit that the first time I heard the amazing song, the show's anthem about autism, I cried. We can all feel happy. We can all feel mad. That doesn't sound revolutionary, but still many believe that autistic people don't feel at all. Crucially, one of the groups behind Julia was the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, the only national organization by and for autistic people in the United States. It was groundbreaking that Sesame Street told stories about an autistic person in consultation with actual autistic people. We are rarely the ones who tell our own stories, and most of the stories other people tell about us are sensational or downright awful. Ironically, the felt puppet with a traffic orange cone nose is one of the most realistic, informed, and positive representations of autism to ever appear on television. But now the organization is no longer involved. Asan's decision to break with Sesame Street this month might seem surprising at first glance, but it came on the heels of the show's baffling partnership with another group that's enduringly divisive among advocates, Autism Speaks. At first, it might not seem so obvious what's wrong with the partnership. 
Sarah then goes on to explain the various things we've talked about, mentioning the leukemia quotation, how it sounds like grieving, and a few other points. I won't repeat everything I've already said, but I think it's important to include Sarah's final statement, not just as a writer, but an autistic woman that I'm sure had high hopes for Julia. The way we talk about autism's impact on families matters. Julia is so refreshing because she is portrayed as a normal child. She plays, has friends, she has a family. She is different in some ways. She has her difficulty tolerating loud noises, for example, but those differences are embraced by the people around her. The Autism Speaks PSAs promote a message diametrically opposed to the spirit and purpose of the character. I hope Sesame Workshop reconsiders its puzzling decision to promote harmful narratives about autism. After waiting so long for a character like her, autistic people like me deserve to love and embrace Julia in an uncomplicated way. And there you have it, more evidence, as if we really needed it, that Autism Speaks portrays autism in a negative light. Autism Speaks treats it like a hopeless disease, and I'll say it again, this is not the case. To anyone that doesn't understand autism, please don't trust Autism Speaks as a source. Thus far, Julia seemed like a great character and example for children that are still learning about others and may not know what a neurological condition is. It really saddens me to know that her character is being backed by the likes of Autism Speaks, and I wouldn't put it past them to change her Julia and start portraying autism in the way they see it. I really don't want this to be the case, and I obviously hope it doesn't happen, but I can't say I have high hopes after everything Autism Speaks has done in the past. Be sure to speak up when you see these things happen. We can't know for sure, but maybe if Asan had more vocal public support, this partnership wouldn't have even happened in the first place. But with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked today's video, leave a like on it, subscribe if you're new, and share the video around to spread the word. And if you want more content from me, you can pop open my description box. You're gonna find links to all of my social media, including my Discord and Twitch, as well as my second channel for my puppy Casper and my collaboration channel with Sad Milk. So thank you all for making it to another video. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.